Okay, so Jack is trying to get by the camera without him get by the camera. And not have the GoPro lens straight on your head. And there I am. Go. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, Nebula took delivery of a new 3D printer. Woohoo! Um, I have been really good and I haven't even opened it, even though the second it arrived, all I wanted to do was open it. Um, but if anyone, I don't know if you've met Bob our robot before, but we needed to 3D print a new Bob, um, Bob 2. And so, yeah, I finally had a reason to order one. So what we've done is we've ordered a G-Tech unit, it's a Chinese brand, um, nice and cheap. And the only thing is you have to put it together yourself. So we thought we'd make a bit of a, a competition out of it. So we have a box here, um, going to unpack it, set out the pieces, and then we have a leaderboard situation where the guys in the office, we've all put bets on how long it can take from the time it's unpacked until it's put together. Um, from looking up online, I think five, six hours is what's expected. So some of us have had great faith in me and others not so much. So let's see how we go. Uh, we might either fast forward or cut that part because that's what we're going to be bored with all the hell. And then we'll start the timer and start building. Sweet. Right, so, uh, you'll notice a couple of things. One, I've had a haircut since we started filming this. Two, I'm about two months older since when I built this. Um, so the leaderboard has gone defunct at this point, although the printer has been working for a few weeks. Um, but to give you just a quick up to speed, um, basically, we put everything together the day we were filming. I came in at the weekend to turn it on and Nothing. We got a light on where the power cable goes in, and that was it. No, the only way we could light up the display is if we put the USB feed into the Arduino um, motherboard. So then, uh, what we did was I went out and I got my multimeter and I ran the multimeter across the power pins here just to see whether there was power going to it. So there was power coming in, but not going out. Um, well, that's not technically true. What I did was I grabbed my multimeter, uh, it was out of batteries, thank you little, it was um, quite an expensive purchase, so the battery connector broke, so I went out and I got a new multimeter, then checked the battery on the um, power supply, found it was broken, contacted the guys on uh, Amazon who sold it, me the G-Tech, to be fair they were excellent, they just said look what's the problem, I told them the troubleshooting steps had gone through, so I'd set up the USB cable in, I can light up the motherboard, but there's just nothing coming out of here. Uh, sent them a picture of the wiring 
of the power supply to show that I had the cables in the right spot. They were like, yep, done the power supply, send you a new one. So that took about two and a half, three weeks to arrive. Um, and then when it arrived, it arrived when I was on holiday. So we had to miss a couple of extra weeks. So long story short, the six hours, 30 minutes guess, which was the highest on the leaderboard, didn't even cover half of it. Nobody had guessed uh, a month and a half. Um, but as you can see, she's working away at the moment. We've done an awful lot of calibration at this point. Um, it is a little bit finicky. I mean, we've since we actually started putting this one together, I've seen some of the more complete ones up in DKIT, um, and they are they're obviously a lot better quality. They're a lot well, not quality, but probably quality as well, but just they're more self-contained. There's no messing around, leveling the bed or anything like that. Um, having said that. I probably prefer having this because we've learned an awful lot more about how the 3D printers work and everything that goes with it. Uh, troubleshooting things like um, not, adhe not adhering to the print bed. Um, learned that the setting by default wasn't to build a raft or a brim, it was just to try and print it naturally onto glass, which for PLA is, is kind of not ideal. So we have since, and the one that's printing here at the moment has printed a raft so that it can kind of, it just let, means that it's better grip when it's printing the actual product. Um, we've printed a couple of benches, those um, 3D printed bolts, and at this point we've kind of gone through four iterations of Benchy, and each time we've changed the setting and tweaked it, it's actually made it better. Um, I don't think we're there yet in terms of print quality, I think there's a little bit more work for me to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, the printer cost us 230 or 40 euro, including delivery, um, and a free row of filament in purple. Um, but yeah, it's, we've had great, great fun with it so far. Uh, we're using, because we're game development anyway, we're just using Blender to create the objects and export them as STLs. Um, and it just means that we can kind of 3D print anything that we're trying to create. So at the moment, we're doing a proof of concept for a in-store game, um, and we've just been able to print off little latches and bits and pieces, which is just, from our perspective, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, the overall result, quite happy with the printer. Um, I will say there are an awful lot of nuts and bolts in it, and every time we pick it up to move it, we find more of them around, so it's probably not as stable as it's supposed to be, so I'm going to have to do a bit of a i check and see where they've come out of and replace them. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting there on that one. Um, she's relatively quiet. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to actually getting to experiment with her now. And hopefully all of our teething problems are out of the way and we have a fully functioning 3D printer.